People love pickups, same with Wranglers. Put them together and you get a money printing machine. Jeep calls it Gladiator, uh, no modesty happening there. This is a big deal on more than one level. Compared to a Wrangler four-door, Gladiator is 30 inches longer. Jeep is hoping it can slay the competition. <laughs> Sorry, had to get that line out of the way, which is Canyon, Colorado, Ranger, Ridgeline, and Tacoma. A lot of people thought this would get the Scrambler name because it was used in the 1980s for the Wrangler-based pickup. Instead, Jeep reached way back in its heritage to the 1960s for the Gladiator name, which was attached to the Wagoneer-type pickup. Besides, Scrambler? Sounds like something I'd order at Denny's for breakfast. At the press launch in Sacramento, California, Jeep's head of exterior design, Mark Allen, is happy to show there's a lot of Wrangler in this pick-em-up truck, starting with the roof. Both hardtop and Sunrider softtop open to the sky, making this the only convertible in the segment. The cloth version does not take up space in the bed. And in just a few minutes, the windshield bolts can be removed for those days. You just have to have bugs in your teeth. Like Wrangler, it's possible to double the price of the vehicle by loading up on accessories. Unlike Wrangler, it's easy to throw loads of kit into the back. Choose any cabin bed size combination, as long as it's a crew cab and five foot steel bed. Tie downs are standard, rail systems, spray and liner, and a power outlet are available. The grill looks the same as Wrangler, but the slots are larger. That's to let more air in for better cooling when towing. But I'm here to drive, so let's get to it. All Gladiators come to battle with four-wheel drive. There are no plans for a rear drive powertrain. The wheelbase is stretched a substantial 19 and a half inches over a four-door Wrangler and adds some 600 pounds in heft. Choose from four models, Sport, Sport Plus, Overland, and Rubicon. I spent time in all but the base Sport. My focus is on the Overland since this is the package I think most people will buy. The drive to the off-road course takes about 90 minutes, plenty of time to evaluate on-road performance. This might be a Jeep, but statistically, gladiators will probably spend most of their time on pavement. So obviously, there's a lot of Wrangler in the Gladiator, especially the bolt upright windshield, which means that there is some wind noise off the pillars, uh, but not as much as you might think. Reasonably quiet too, uh, this isn't too much of a surprise. Jeep engineers took much of the truckiness from the ride quality of the all new JL Wrangler that the Gladiator is based on. So with the extra wheelbase and different rear suspension components, some of which are off the Ram 1500 pickup, uh, the Gladiator is actually pretty comfortable to drive. On center feel is pretty good, though not locked down like the crossover like Ridgeline. In the corners, there's the expected understeer and modest body roll. You didn't think this would drive like a Corvette, did you? The comfortable cloth seats and steering wheel are heated, so those in Duluth are covered. I wouldn't want to drive across the US in this truck, but the hour and a half to the off-road course, not an issue at all. Now, if the only thing that you're thinking about is ride comfort, uh, maybe go with Ford Ranger. But really, uh, for a Jeep and one that's based on a Wrangler, pretty good Gladiator. And for those interested in active electronic safety features like automatic emergency braking and adaptive cruise control, those are available in all models. As far as fuel economy, <laughs> well, it's not terrific. Uh, what did you expect? So what moves Gladiator? This being an FCA product, it's no surprise. There's a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 here, rated at 285 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. The e-torque engine that's in the Wrangler, not available in the Gladiator. It's because of towing. Speaking of, it can tug up to 7,650 pounds. Max payload is 1,600 pounds. Uh, these are best in class, according to Jeep, because well, that's how pickups are marketed. For now, a six-speed manual transmission is standard on all Gladiator models. This eight-speed automatic is an upcharge of two grand. The four-wheel drive system on the Sport and Overland is Jeep's command track system with a two-speed transfer case. FCA's three-liter EcoDiesel V6 is planned for calendar year 2020. Now, to do this, 
I'm wisely switching to the off-road oriented Rubicon. I gotta wonder if the Maximus moniker was considered. In addition to improved suspension travel and articulation, Rubicon hits the trail with electronic sway bar disconnect, a front camera for finding bumper pranging boulders too. It also sports more capable shoes, additional undercarriage protection, and stylish red tow hooks. So I've been told to keep the windows up because mud flies. It all starts easy enough. Heavy rain has made this course as slick and messy as an Ozzy Osbourne concert. Soon enough, we're into tougher terrain. It's all about being slow and steady. An off-road plus button adapts the four-wheel drive system to rock, sand, or mud. Those are serious rocks. Ooh. And Gladiator Rubicon gets a different rock track 4x4 system with a 4 to 1 4 low ratio and true lock locking differentials standard. Oh man, this is a pretty serious course. Which is comforting right now. Cows, I think they're I think they're commenting on my driving skills. <laughs> The electronics are waterproofed and mounted high in the engine compartment. Jeep claims a water fording ability of up to 30 inches. That front camera really is useful. And in case you can't find 30 inches of water, the lens has its own. Wow, muddy and a hill. And no problem. Now, will owners actually do these kind of shenanigans? Uh, Wrangler owners actually tend to, at least at a much higher rate than most SUVs. I do love doing this, and I, I especially love doing this in somebody else's vehicle. On paper, the longer wheelbase should affect breakover angle and reduce the off-road prowess of Gladiator. Thank goodness for skin plates. But in practice, that doesn't seem to be an issue. The most significant difference is departure angle. <laughs> Slick rocks and gravity, always a constant. <laughs> wow, that is something you won't do in a Honda Civic. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, maybe you'll do it in a Honda Civic, but you'll only do it once. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the interior, since it's pretty much like a Wrangler, but this Overland cabin has a solid, authentic look to it with materials that feel battle-tested. There are many storage cubbies, though uh, some are kind of small. I like FCA's Uconnect interface with screen sizes of 5, 7, and 8.4 inches. The layout is clear, the response is snappy, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are along for the adventure. The Rubicon gets different red trim panels. As expected, the doors on Gladiator come off just like Wrangler, and there's this handy handle here so that when you pull the pins, you have a grip on it and you don't drop it on the ground. Those and many of the body panels are made of aluminum. The tonneau cover is easy to get out of the way. The aluminum tailgate is light and dampened. There is a full-size tire mount underneath here. It'll accommodate a 35-inch tire. Plus, when reaching in from the side, I can touch the bed. I'm five foot nine. Grooves help to create a second tier, along with a simple but effective way to adjust the tailgate level. Jeep says that the back seats are unique to Gladiator and claims best in class legroom. But really, most important, it's comfortable back here. Your friends won't hate you. I know all the news is about the bed, but really, the back seat is incredibly flexible. The crew will not want for drink holders, storage pockets, and charging outlets. Uh, the seat backs can lock in place, so small valuables like a laptop computer are hard to steal from back here. They fold flat and even, so anything put on top here is more stable. Or, if you want, flip the cushions upwards. Uh, notice how easy it is to do with one hand. This reveals storage underneath. There's a lockable cover available for this. And if all this isn't enough, an optional removable Bluetooth speaker can be had. It charges while in place. Uh, yeah, it's kind of gimmicky, but eh, kind of cool. Sorry I'm blocking the shot, I was in a hurry. This is a well-done machine, and Jeep engineers decided not to compromise its ability. 
that means Gladiator may slash away at your finances. This truck isn't cheap. A base sport model with manual transmission begins at about $35,000. I'll guesstimate the Overland model I drove on road was 47 grand as tested, and a fully optioned Gladiator Rubicon at $60,000 will wound your bank account. That kind of money buys a nicely equipped Ford F-150 Raptor. But like chocolate and peanut butter, Wrangler and pickup are two great things that go great together. Gladiator is unlike anything else out there, and it's more than the sum of its parts. It does chores, it's always up for a good time, and has so many features, Swiss Army knives will be shamed. Jeep enters the Coliseum fully prepared for battle with this one. I like events like this because of the access to the engineers. I didn't have time to interview them because of time and weather that suddenly rolled in, but you can always tell when the manufacturing and engineering team is genuinely excited about a launch, and that was the case here. Scott Tallon, the brand manager for Jeep, told me they all knew that there was pent-up demand for this truck, but they felt it was critical that they take the time to get it right, and that's one of the reasons why it's on the pricey side. And finally, along with the Scrambler and Gladiator names, there's another Jeep pickup if you know the brand's heritage. At the press conference, there was a Comanche in perfect shape with 18 miles on the odometer, though <laughs> I'm kind of curious if the marketing people in the late 80s really thought this model name through. <laughs> Think about it for a second. There you go, that's my look at the all new Jeep Gladiator. If you're looking for a midsize pickup, uh, I would highly suggest you give this one a drive. Yeah, it might be a little bit expensive, but really, test drive it. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.